Who remembers the BJ and Bill show all those years ago on WOLZ? Well, many have said they missed the show, and guess what? They're back. Welcome to the BJ and Bill podcast. Welcome to BJ and Bill, the podcast. This already, can you believe it? Episode 40. I find that darn hard to believe. Darn hard to believe. You know what? We're almost, yeah, and what, another 52 years. Another 12, and we've been doing this almost a year. Crazy. I mean, literally, really crazy. Where's the year gone? Well, it's not a year yet, but I mean, still, 40 is 40 weeks. That's insane. I think though the very first the first few episodes we did like two or three <clears throat> pretty quickly, and then right. we went to the one a week I believe. Right, so. right. So that helped well, whatever, bunch them up a little. And we've been around for a while, that's for sure. In more ways than one. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, old man! In more ways we, than one. And we do want to ask everyone to give us a five star review. Heck, you know, at this point, I'll even take a four star review. But but I would prefer a five. But you know, I'll take a four. Think positive, but, five stars. But what I'm learning in the podcast business yes. that uh, the more you know, likes, shares, um, and especially reviews, you get to climb. I don't know what kind of ladder it is, but you yes. climb the podcast ladder. Oh yeah, and it makes your podcast easier to find for people that have no idea who BJ and Bill the podcast are. That is correct. It's kind of, and it does it within the categories so i what we looked that up once we're like what we're like lifestyle or something we're, we're, we're a generic category i mean we're very generic so yeah it's not that would like take a lot of reviews yeah no yeah <clears throat> so yeah you know joe rogan we're coming for you but i think we got some work to do on that so but everything <laughs> helps everything absolutely positively helps and we totally totally appreciate it so yes thank you so if you do that we would appreciate it yes we, we certainly would, would. We're well, certainly you are back from your undisclosed location. I am. It wasn't terribly undisclosed. You could look it up on a map in Blue Ridge, Georgia, and there I was. <laughs> if you did the Google Earth, you could see me waving from the back porch. No, it was. Uh, yeah, I am back. I am ecstatically happy to be back. I mean, don't get me wrong. Blue Ridge, Georgia. Beautiful, beautiful place. I mean, totally gorgeous. But you're kind of like living. um like uh like a mountain man out there because it's just it was literally for two weeks it was me and the dog and i mean occasionally you would pass somebody else walking their dogs on the road and you know i went into went into the big city to go to walmart a couple of times for groceries and that was it that was it i spent two weeks sitting out and again totally beautiful sitting out on the back porch enjoying nature you know deer and raccoons and hummingbirds and hawks and all sorts of just gorgeous scenery no and bears critters didn't see any bears Did i can't believe you didn't see any bears no bears sorry they're kind of you know they keep they're they're antisocial. they keep to themselves you know you got to be <laughs> and besides if you were did run into a bear it's probably not a good thing i mean i'm assuming you would both go running the other direction i would hope so anyway no bears nope no bears a lot of deer now, now you're the fun. computer guy and you talked about yes. <laughs> you were waving at <clears throat> Google Earth. Waving at Google Earth, yes. Right. Now, how long does it take Google to like catch up? Because whenever I look at our house on Google, right, we're still just a big blot of, of dirt. Pile of dirt. In the middle of a woods. Well, when you consider that Google Earth is indeed covering the whole planet, it's going to take them some time. So I don't know how long it takes them to refresh that or not. Although, you, so you're talking about the satellite picture looking down or are yeah. you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, they also have the, the streets thing. So, you know, you could like if you want to see directions to where you're going, you can pull up Google Maps and put on the street view and you could actually the car actually drives down the streets. and all. So Google has both those things that they're doing. They're doing the streets and they're doing the whole planet. I'm assuming, well, I know for a fact, Google doesn't own any satellites that we know of, <laughs> that they're not spying on us. Well, um, they're not spying on us. All I have to do is say a product, and I had to have my cell phone within range. Yes. And the next time I turn on, well, maybe it's Facebook instead of Google, but I can, even if I Google a product or I, yes. I talk about a product, that product shows up 
for some odd reason on a Facebook ad. For some odd reason. Wow. What a shock. I yeah, mean, that's, I took the, I, I'll be honest with you. I am kind of a computer geek and I'm a little, a little tiny bit concerned about those sorts of things. So I don't have the Facebook app on my phone. If I want, I can still go to Facebook, but I do it through the, the web browser. It's not quite as good an experience as they say, but at least I don't think it's quote unquote spying on me. Because think- one time the wife and this was back in four Myers days. So this was like, you know, this was like over four or five years ago. Right. There was a new restaurant in our area. And my wife mentioned it and I go, oh, well, and I, you know, we talked about the restaurant for maybe two or three minutes. Right. I went on Facebook about 10 minutes later, an ad popped up for that freaking restaurant. Tell me how that happened. Yeah, you're, it's listening to you. Of course, it's listening to you. Oh. Now, they tell you, they say, I mean, if you've on your phone or your iPad, they have a little itty bitty indicator light when the microphone is on. But do you trust Facebook to play by the rules? I don't <laughs> really. So anyway, I, I can't I can't tell you, I, you know, how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? It's just everything knows everything about you. Everything knows everything. So, but, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to grow a garden. So I Googled, you know, I, we, we needed a rake and a hoe. So I Googled hoe. Now you would believe all the sites that are advertising (laughs) on this Facebook page. (laughs) Honey, why are those pictures showing up on your phone? Because Uh, I Googled hoes. All right. Did you just make that? Did you just make up that joke? I just made it up. It's a pretty good. I got to give you credit. Pretty good. You could use that in the act. I'm sure you could use that in the act. If I would do the act again. Well, there's that. Yeah, there's that. You could, but write it down anyway. Write it down. And I, and, and, well, you know, I should I should do it since I'm not doing stand up. I should give you another piece that I wrote over the weekend. I'm ready. This is kind of crude though, oh, but oh it's, boy. it's real life. Oh boy, moms, you as, might want to cover as, the kids' ears as we get older. Yes. Um, we go on blood thinners. A lot of us older people. Oh, because, we do. You know, stents and other things that we get done to us. I, I wouldn't know, but go ahead. We go on blood thinners. Yes. I thought I would landscape. Landscape. Land, you mean the like go out in the garden? No, not the garden, but, the, you know, down there. Oh, oh, they call that they call that manscape. Oh, okay. I needed to do some manscaping. I got you. Okay. Well, I nicked. My little, my little friend, and I am on blood thinners. You would have thought if I was a woman, it was my time of the month. Oh my God. That sounds like something from Game of Thrones. Oh my God. (laughs) I will say it's a miraculous heal though. It it healed like in a couple of days. You couldn't even hardly tell the notch was there, but you sure could for the first, you know, four or five hours of like, oh man, it's still bleeding. And you you can't put a Band-Aid on the little soldier. (laughs) I I hope you are writing this down, BJ Odom. This is funny stuff. It's a little adult. But it's true. This is for the midnight show on the cruise line. This is the midnight show on the cruise line. You wouldn't be doing this, you know, on the day day cruise. You'd do it on the night show. Yeah, no, this is not during the day. But it, okay. So I, I, I hear what you're saying. So, yes. Needless to say, that part of the man's anatomy has quite a bit of blood flowing through it, or at least it should, if all is working properly. So you... Well, um, it's not working properly, but it's got a lot of blood flowing to it. <laughs> maybe we can get... Maybe maybe this uh, podcast will get out of the PG uh, category uh, this wow, week. Wow, apparently it already has today. <laughs> It already has today, so I'm going to have to mark this one, you know, NS, <laughs> what is that? Not NSWF, not safe for work, NSFW, <laughs> NSFW. I, I don't know. I don't either. Wow. Wow. Okay, we're 10 minutes into the show, we are already 
entering new territory here. <laughs> yeah, I rate was, that. I was people. I was really tempted to say we're entering virgin territory, but I didn't want to do that. <laughs> oh, that's been over a long time ago. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Well, anyway, we hope so. Uh, let's let's. Oh my God! So many jokes are coming to mind now. Oh my God! I can't help myself. So let's put a little bow on this and finish the story. Everybody's okay. Oh, everybody's okay. It just at the, let's say at the time of the infraction. <laughs> yes, it was quite bloody. And I'll bet it was. And, and you know, really, the next day you could see like a pretty good gash because it was like a little scab. Wow! And then, like the next day. I don't know. Like you said, a lot of blood goes there. Maybe that's it. Maybe but the next it. day, it seemed like it had pretty well, you know, it healed itself. Well, the human body is an amazing thing. So I can do that on my arm. and It'll take two or three weeks to heal. I do it down there. Boy, oh, boy. It healed like in a couple of days. So I curiosity is getting the better of me here. Were you <laughs> using like a sharp instrument, like scissors or a razor? Or do you have a do you have an electric? gizmo that does this <laughs> well it's an electric gizmo <laughs> oh yeah that's another one i just thought of that thing. No, not that kind of gizmo not that kind I do of gizmo, have an electric gizmo not that kind of gizmo it was called mellow yellow <laughs> wait a minute what wait what don't you remember last week's episode with marty Berger? yes the song mellow yellow donovan how it got its name now I've I've already forgotten. You've forgotten? I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have How to go back. How can you forget listen. that? I don't know. It, it was... was the name of his girlfriend's vibrator. Oh, that's right. That's right. And if you listen to the song and the lyrics, it makes perfect sense, people. There'll oh people, man, there'll be people from last week and this week now listening to the song "Mellow Yellow" just so they can listen to the words with brand new, fresh ears. So I yes, my mellow yellow. Yes, yes. All right. So, all right. Uh, that's uh, that's okay. I don't. I I think I've heard enough details about <laughs> PJ Odom's <clears throat> incident. Wow, wow. I'm glad you're now, okay. I'm, I'm I got sure a feeling you and though, your wife are glad you're okay because you're on the keto diet, right? Yes, I am. So you probably don't drink soda anyway, or diet soda. No, it's pretty much I make my own little sun tea kind of a thing. Yeah, I don't drink much soda either. I still drink my armor all or my body armor light. Body armor light, yes. But listen to this. I'm listening. If you're one of those people that drink a lot of diet sodas. Yes. A study found, another study somebody made. Always. Found that drinking large quantities of diet soda, listen to this, can do more damage to your teeth than meth. Wow. So think about that next time you drink a diet soda, people. And with a meth chaser. Yeah, that's <laughs> really well actually, the, I, I, I'm not going to say I knew that, but I remember seeing, and I have no idea why I was watching something about like healthcare coverage. I was watching a documentary about healthcare coverage and there was a they were they were talking about these doctors that go out into the real real backwoods rural areas of America where people just don't have access to doctors and hospitals and stuff. And yes, these people that drank soda, you know, any kind. I mean, you know, but especially the really you know high sugar, high caffeine ones or whatever like that. Yet their teeth were awful, awful because of the diet soda. It, it ate them out of the right. And so anyway, ugh. no, I. I actually did the only soda I bought literally in the past couple of months is I bought some diet ginger ale uh, because I have a little small, I have a, I have a little bottle of bourbon that occasionally will get cracked <laughs> open here for an adult beverage in the evenings at my house. And that's well, about I got to have a little diet Coke or regular Coke. Anytime I, uh, rum, 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 rum. Yes, 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 yes. That's so. my drink of choice. Yes. Yes. I, th and that was my drink of choice up in the mountains as well, up in, in Georgia that I, f I found an old bottle of Captain Morgan's spiced rum. And so, and there were diet Cokes nearby. So yeah, that was, that was a fun thing. It was, that was a nice, it was a good way to pass a little time in the evening there. So yes, all good. All good. 
Now, here's something I know you have no experience at all, and I don't believe it either, but my wife would probably agree with this statement. A majority of pet owners say that their pet is their soulmate. Is their soulmate? That's a big, yeah. I mean, I hear you. Um, wow, really? What if you have more than one? What if you're like a cat lady? You got well, five of them. Then you got lots of soulmates. Lots of soulmates, yeah. You know, I, I, I hate to say this, but I think if it came down to the dog or me. Oh, come on, BJ. Don't even. I already know what the wife would pick. We all know what your <laughs> wife would pick. <laughs> that's not even, that's not even a, a, you know, that's not even a question. There's no thinking to that one. She's, you know, hey, dear, if it was me and the dog and she's already saying dog. <laughs> yeah. As we told people last week, we was going to have a very special guest two weeks in a row. Although we always said scheduling permitting. Right. Scheduling did not permit for this week's guest that we had all picked out. He had uh, some issues. So uh, we were unable to uh, connect with the uh, guest this week. Maybe in the future we'll have some star from Southwest Florida television. But uh, not this week, people. Okay. You're that's stuck fine. with BJ and Bill. And that's okay, too. Yeah. <laughs> and which is why we don't announce exactly who the special guest star will be, just in case something happens. We don't want people to start, you know, to either A, get their hopes up, or B, go, oh, I didn't want to hear that guy. So, yeah. Or that girl so, or whatever. So, yeah. But it was nice to have Marty Berger on last week. I enjoyed that. Awesome. I mean, that now, to my mind, there's a guy who really – kind of i don't know if he did a lot of i don't know if he planned out what he did or if he gave it a ton of thought or whatever but it seems to me like that's a guy who really kind of took the radio career and then when the radio career was over he transitioned into something else that he loved and he did that for a long time and now he's doing something else that he loves and he's really kind of he's got it dialed in really nicely i mean and he's you know living out there in arizona enjoying life and all of that and uh yeah, that it it just sounds like he's doing a, it sounds like he's doing really well for himself and his family. Let's put it that way. So, hats off, thumbs up, whatever whatever credit we can give to our old buddy Party Marty Burger there. It's that's great. And like so, you know, with the radio getting more and more corporate. Yes. And so now they're downsizing more and more, and less jobs are available, and more people are getting cut. The I still know some people in the business, and so do you. Yeah, yeah, And most of the people that I know that are still in the business, they are telling me they're still kind of looking for their exit plan. I remember, I don't think you were a part of the conversation, but I remember talking back at WLZ at Clear Channel at our, at our palace there in Fort Myers, talking to three or four other guys. And they were younger guys. They were like either interns or I don't, I don't remember how the conversation got started, but I do remember at one point I said, gentlemen, don't ever forget this important radio concept. And they're all like, what? And I said, exit strategy, (laughs) (laughs) because you ain't going to be here forever. And it's just the way the business works. So actually even more nowadays, you know, it's, it's, Oh, absolutely. It's sad about uh, the radio business. Cause like I said, because of, you know, syndication, Big corporations taking over, yeah. you know, companies and they're using, as we say, voice trackers, which means they're not really there, but you're hearing them. They sound live. But, uh, you know, instead of like when we would do our four hour show, we would be there for four hours. We would, you know, prep for an hour. Yep. A lot of these shows are, are that, you know, take four and five hours that you listen on the radio. It's taking them about 30 minutes to an hour to put together. And they're not even there. I noticed that, especially when I'm listening, because I I have a Sirius XM in my car. And so when I'm out driving, you know, especially when I'm doing my little pizza delivery joint or whatever in the afternoons, that the the DJ, you know, they have some stations on Sirius have quote unquote live DJs. You know, at least they have a human there speaking to you, which I still, because I'm a radio guy, I actually like that. I actually like to hear another human voice telling me a little bit about the music or whatever's going on. But they'll always say, you know, okay, I'm done here, but now I'll see you in five minutes over on this channel and then I'll be on this channel. So you know for a fact that they're working from home or some small home studio. And they're probably like you said, just sitting at the computer 
cranking out, okay, for a half an hour, they're putting together this program, and then they talk on this program, and then, you know, and then the computer somewhere, probably in New York City, puts it all together, and it sounds seamless, and it sounds good, so, but yeah, who, I mean, is anybody, as a young person, is anybody even going into the radio business nowadays? That would be an interesting thing to think about. I mean, now the last station that I worked at, which, as I said, they were live, you know, about everything but overnights. There was an actual human being sitting behind the microphone, even on the weekends. Most times there was a real human being sitting behind the microphone. So, right, you know what, Bob Walker, I salute you and uh, the people there at Hall Communications at WPCV, and not only at the radio station there, but they have a few other stations across the country. And that's pretty much the formula, you know, in all of their markets. So I say, right. you know, kudos to you. And the guy that took, because I was doing, you know, the seven to midnight gig. And when I left, the uh, gentleman that took it over and is still doing it, he was uh, probably somewhere in his, you know, younger 20s. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And, and, but but he is one of those, uh, and I don't want to say odd, because he is not odd, but there are those people that are just radio junkies. Oh, yeah. And not only are they radio junkies, but they know about computers. They know about transmitters. Right. I mean, they know about towers and how the antennas work. He is one of those guys. Okay. That, you know, he could be your IT guy. He could be your DJ. I mean, he. Right. And he's like, he's young 20s. Good. And uh, he's probably, you know, no matter what happens with the business, because he's a great IT guy, he probably will have a future uh, in radio if he wants it. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad that there are some of those people still left out there, you know, guys and girls who who want to make that a career. I Because I, I, it seems to me that all, not all, you you I'll say this and then you see what you think about it because it just seems to me that all the reasons many of the reasons that I got into radio are not really a thing anymore it's not really that that, that the personality the fun the being with people the, the you know talking to people on the on the air or at live events and all of that sort of a thing and you just that's not really the way the business works anymore like you said it's like you know, they do the voice tracking and they do it, put it in the computer and the machine makes everything sound right and all that sort of thing. So to me, the reasons that I enjoyed radio, that I loved the radio business, I don't see a lot of that anymore. I, I just don't, I, I just don't see it. I just don't see that as the way the, the business works anymore. I don't, but am I, I wrong? I, I don't know. I think the business has changed too, because. Oh, sure. I remember as a youngster, I mean, it was fun going to bed and listening to your little transistor and listening to the different stations and stuff like that. Right now, the, the, this generation, instead of listening to their little, you know, their little transistor, they've got their little phone in their hand yep. and they're not real. I mean, they might be listening to music, but it's probably Pandora yep. or Spotify or something like that. And if they're not listening to music, more and more are either on, you know, TikTok. Yeah. Or one of the, you know, Facebook. YouTube, yeah. You know, Facebook now yeah. has a lot of Facebook. videos on it. Yep. 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 As the young people say, the gram. The you, know, you can watch <laughs> a lot of you can watch a lot of videos on the gram. I yep. like my I, and I'm I'm not for sure because I'm not around her 24-7, you know, I'm not for sure. Right. But it seems like whenever I am around my granddaughter and she's awake, and she's you know, she's usually watching TikTok. Yeah. And my daughter, basically, who is in her 30s, you know, will still watch a lot of TikTok. TikTok and, seems to be that thing. Oh, it is the thing. It absolutely is. And it's you can I, I mean, there there are arguments. There are real, you know, people uh, who have thought about this, not just BJ and Bill. I mean, people, you know, like real people who have done studies on it, that it 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 can be it can be shall we say a negative in a young person's life because they get addicted to that literally addicted to that 
and then they don't pay attention to anything in the outside world like oh i don't know school studies and stuff like or mom and dad or friends <laughs> real live irl in real life friends so yeah it's I don't want to start a whole open a whole can of worms on, you know, social media stuff, but it's tough. So my question was going to be your daughter, you know, has her daughter, your granddaughter. Um, has she thought about that or does she even consider that or is that not even I mean, about, you know, making sure that the granddaughter is also having real life interactions with real life people and all that sort of thing? Or does that not has, has that yeah. can't, not come up yet? I, it hasn't come up yet. I mean, they, they try. Right. But, you know, and I will tell you this, and I hate to admit this, but I will admit it. You know, I, I've never been hooked on on smoking. Never have. I mean, never mm -hmm. was a smoker. Mm -hmm. Now, I have talked to people. My wife at one time, she was hooked on cigarettes. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, you, you know, you're sitting there. I got to have a cigarette. Mm -hmm. But I would say the closest thing to addiction I have is Facebook. Like I can be sitting there and my phone can be beside me and for no reason at all. And not even because I'm thinking about it. Right. I pick it up, hit the Facebook button and kind of stroll through and see what's going on. And then maybe I'll, Oh, here's a nice, cute little video. And then yep. if you'll notice with Facebook now, when you see one video, yep. you can actually watch one after another, after another, just and there's been like times it. I've been there for like 20 or 30 minutes going, Oh my God, I've just spent 30 minutes watching these little minute, two, three minute videos. Just like TikTok, just like, and YouTube, now YouTube has this thing called YouTube Shorts, which is the exact same idea as TikTok. It's just to something to reel you in, keep your attention and all of that. Because yeah, they everybody recognizes. Oh, that. my wife, my my wife. Well, I'm only that when it, when there's a pokey stop around. My wife just goes, you're addicted to Pokemon. Pokemon, <laughs> really? I am. I can't help it. Like there'll be a restaurant where you can, you know, get the at a Wi Fi called a Pokey Stop where you can get oh. the Pokeballs to catch the Pokemon. I have no idea. I mean, I know what a Pokemon is, but I other I have zero idea on how to play this game. Oh, believe me, I will say that if I'm at a restaurant, and there's a Pokey Stop somewhere close where I can get balls to catch <laughs> other. I will sit there. Have my phone on oh, every five minutes. Oh, I can get another bunch of balls. Okay, I got to wait another five minutes where I can get another load. Boom, I can get another. And I, you know, be, well, and then you get to the point where you can't get any more because your your bag is full. Your you bag know, is you full. Carry around with the balls that you're going to throw to catch these little Pokemon. But <laughs> I will admit it, ladies and gentlemen, with my hand on my phone, I will say I am addicted to Pokemon. Wow. Who knew? I know. Who knew? But you know, I will admit it. I, I'm I'm not one of those closet pokey pokey players. There, there's a 12 step program for this or something. I there don't know. Should be. There should be. Yeah. There should be for TikTok and everything else. I for some reason I'm not into the, and maybe it's a good thing. Maybe I don't know. But the games, the those like Pokemon or all those video games that you can get on your phone. And I have an I have a gorgeous iPad that I will sit at sit and watch uh you know while I have the regular TV on in the room. I'll also have the iPad in my usually be solid or something like that. Free cell free cell is my game. I am addicted to free cell. I admit that. But it's not I mean, you know, I could I could put it down anytime, BJ. I could put it down. <laughs> That's what you tell yourself. But, you know, but yes, I admit, even though I've got the TV on and, you know, the basketball or the hockey game is on, I still have the iPad in my lap and I'm still, so you're still like split spinning in your brain, you know, going back and forth between different things. Can't be good for your attention. Can't be yeah. good for your brain. Facebook is more than Pokemon, but I do play a lot of Pokemon, but I play no other games on my phone, but Pokemon. And if I am Facebook. watching TV, like you say, you know, you're watching basketball right. or you're watching right, right, anything at all, your favorite movie, when the commercial right. comes on, I will pick oh, it yeah. up and check Facebook just to see if anything has happened in the last 20, 10, 15 minutes before the last commercial break played. Wow. Wow. It's addicting. And, and of course, Facebook is for us, and I love this, that Facebook is for us old people. <laughs> that the young kids, it's all TikTok and the gram, like you said, and all of that. And but when it started, it was all sure. like college age kids, high school and college oh, age kids. 
that's how Zuckerberg started it. And, you know, in it, for college kids, that's how it got started. Absolutely. And then I don't know, thing came along. Well, that's how it all works. I mean, the young kids start, will start into something. The rest of us will catch on. And then the young kids will all the, the, the up and coming young kids will go, Ooh, that's for like grandma. That's grandpa's on Facebook. I don't, you know, uh, I talk to my friends on Instagram or TikTok or wherever they happen to be. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. It really is. So, well, I'm betting that both of my grandchildren are on Facebook and I'll be damned if I can find, I found my granddaughter, but she hardly ever posts anything. Hardly ever. Of course. I, so I think don't... there's another Facebook page that she doesn't let grandpa know about. And I wouldn't doubt my grandson has a Facebook Ooh. page that I have no idea about, but I can't wow. confirm that, but you never know. I hadn't thought of that, but now that you mentioned it, I have heard of people doing that, that like, oh, sure. Here's my public Facebook page with all the good sanitized pictures you know, don't show me out on a Friday night getting, you know, stoned or drunk or whatever and all that. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, okay. I get that. I get that. But wow. Wow. Well, even my daughter who's in her thirties, you know, like if, if, if she posts something and, and either my wife or I make a comment, why did you do that? What did you do that for? <laughs> they don't want to see, they don't want to see old people like us posting out, you know, it's like, it's not cool. Sorry. You're just not cool. BJ. At least well, to your breaks, but we need to take one so yes. you and I can make some money. That would be awesome. So go get yourself a, a, a refill on your coffee or do whatever you have to do, and we will be right back. We're back. It's BJ and Bill, the podcast. Yay. You can find us now. Speaking of Facebook, if you're still one of the cool people on Facebook, please come over and find <laughs> us. I know, right? Uh, BJ and Bill podcast. Just do a search for that and you'll find our, our page. And if you'd like to email directly, you can do that as well. Same address, BJ and Bill podcast at gmail.com. There you go. All good. So, and if, and if you go looking for us, you can find us wherever you find your favorite podcast. But we are BJ and Bill the podcast the podcast yeah that and and it it only took us like you know 10 shows to figure out that that's how you would talk to alexa if you wanted to ask her to play the podcast and it pretty well works it pretty oh so stop alexa stop she was <laughs> you can't say it. her name what's wrong with you uh, she, and she perked right up and i'm like no no i can hear her beeping at me in the background there so anyway I am expecting a delivery from her parent company today, so she will be announcing that to me at any time. So, but we'll see what happens. Um, my um, my armor light, my body armor light, body armor light. I get that from her. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. Do you have it on like auto ship where it just comes yeah. every week or? Every... Oh, look at that! Nice. I got it. Well, all my stuff comes, and I wish I, I wish I could figure out. I mean, there's got to be a way that I could do some of these things like every other week. Right. But most of them seem to be every other, I mean, every month. Every month. Like the, the I think it's the first, or like the second Monday hmm. of every month, I get a shipment and I've got about, oh, anywhere from seven to 10 things that arrive every once a month. Seven to 10 things every month? Yep. All right. We're on to a new story here. Like, like what? Well, three Unless of Unless you're them, one of those people... I mean, like that gets their toilet paper and their paper towels from Amazon, which to me sounds crazy, but some people do it. My son does it. Wow. But now um, three things that we get, though. We get on the account that aren't anything to do with me or mm. my wife. Or your wife. They're with the dog. Yep. Okay. Dog treats. Dog treats. Um, and then another one is like the, the, the chewy things that are like toothbrushes. That cleans their teeth. Yes. Yes. That. And then one more thing, like like they're like little little like bony things or like little, but they're they're bigger. She only gets one of those a day. Okay. But we get a load of those once a month too. And we get the toothbrushes once a month and the dog treats once a month. Wow. Wow. That dog is living large. Yeah. That's awesome. I can tell you a few things that I have 
Now, they, now some of these things don't come every month. Some of them come like every other month. Right. Some other ones come like every three months. Some of them do come like every month. So let's just go. Let's just look and see what uh, the Odom household gets like on a monthly basis from a, Amazon. Uh, well, this is like this is this will be uh, coming up. You know, this the twelfth, June twelfth. Okay. There'll be some body armor light. Of course. Uh, since I have a CPAP machine, there's a little towelettes or whatever, the moist towels that you wipe down your CPAP with. Really? Because I have one and I, I'm notoriously bad about taking care of my CPAP machine. But anyway. And I got those. Then we got the dog biscuit, uh, the dog thing. Dog treats. Yep. And I get a shampoo that comes like every two or three months. Really? I get razors that come every two or three months. Really? Every couple of months, I I I, uh, I take a nose spray for okay. allergies. That, that works better to me. That works better than Claritin or any of the other things I've ever tried. Okay, a do it at spray. night. Two squirts in each nostril works great for me. Uh, and we get uh, the laundry uh, the laundry up. detergent. Yeah, um, I get uh, the the lip uh, the the chapstick. Right, that comes like every three or four months. That one. Boy, boy. And um, every uh, few months we get uh, the 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 gook the ink for the uh, printer. Right. Uh, let me see what else I see on here. And pretty much uh, that's about it. Oh yeah, wow. um, some uh, the things that I don't know how you even they're like tooth they're like flosses, but you can get far back into your mouth with them. They're on like a little stick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the little placker things or whatever. Yeah, I get those every once in a while. That's pretty much it. Wow. So you've got like a regular stash here every month that coming to your door. Yeah, and if you get at least five, you get like 5 to 15% off each thing. And I know that you also get a discount. Like if you put it on a subscription, you get like on every month. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that's what's Well, wow. See, I never, I I don't know what it is. And, And I have Amazon Prime. So I could get the free shipment and the whole thing, which I have one, com- not not one thing. I think it's a box of three things coming today. But I just don't, I, I, I just, it's not my, it's not my default thing to think of. It's like, oh, I'll just order it on Amazon. It'll show up. I don't I, think I, that way. I think too, it's got a lot to do with age. How so? Because we're, well, I mean, we're almost the same age. What are you thinking? Well, my wife and I'm a little bit different with that, but my wife, she wants to touch it. She wants to feel it. Oh yeah. I get that. I mean, I, I do understand that. Yes. But my son, and, and like I said, he's, you know, I, not, not a lot younger generation, but a younger, well, he's, mm-hmm. he's a generation behind us. Mm-hmm. Like he even does his groceries. And I say, you know, that you were paying for delivery. You're paying more money than if you right. would just go to the store. Right. And he goes, but if I just go to the, and I've told you the story before, he goes, yep. But if I just go to the store, I'm going to walk out with a bunch of things I really don't need. This way, I order what I want and what I need. And I don't pick up the frills that I see. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. snack would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do give myself a, a little pat on the back. I'm patting myself on the back. A little pat on the back that I'm pretty good in the grocery store in that. If it's not on, if it's not on the must-have, need this list, it's it's not coming home. Does it never happen? No. Occasionally, something will jump into my shopping cart without my noticing it, and I get to the checkout, and I'm like, oh, I'll just take it home. So <laughs> that happens. I get it. I'm pretty good with that. But I totally get the I want to see it thing, especially groceries, especially I think. Especially, yeah, especially when it comes to like fruits and vegetables and uh, yeah, steaks and stuff like that. I'll poke around at Sam's club or Walmart or Publix or whatever, until I find the ones that I like. And then those go in the basket. And I know that if you're just doing one of the shopping services, I know those guys at Instacart are working hard, but they don't care. Okay. You know, two pounds of burger, flop, steaks, flop, head of lettuce, throw it in the cart. And it's like, they're not looking to see if it's a good one. If it's the best one there is. So, you know, you, your wife and I, we're on the same page with that. Some things, you're, you're right. You don't, who has to look at dog biscuits? Dog biscuits are dog biscuits, right? They're going to be the same. So I get that. So, okay, that's fine. 
Now, another thing too, as we're talking about deliveries, and we've talked about this in the past, right? Is the food deliveries? Now, you you deliver pizza, but you I deliver- do. I'm a I'm a, I'm a Domino's delivery guy. Three but you a are week. a Domino's delivery guy. Three days a week. And so you know, sometimes I mean, if maybe I'm in a big, but I of course maybe that's an older generation too. My son does a lot of the, you know, Uber Eats and Grubhub and, and, and yeah, 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 all those. All and I just, I would prefer that maybe being older, maybe being retired. I'm not on such a strict time thing. Like I, I don't have to work all day long. Right. But I would just soon grab the wife, go to a nice restaurant. Yes. Especially when there's only two of us. I mean, I, my son does have two others, you know? Yes. And, you know, so there's more people in the house. I think by the, by the time you cook, do all the dishes, and everything else, I mean, time is money. And, you know, I would just prefer to go out, grab, you know, and a lot of times, you know, being older too, like what we seem to do a lot sometimes, we'll maybe grab a couple appetizers. Right. And we'll share. Right. Instead of getting a complete meal, we'll just, oh, I want, let's get this, let's get this. Then we'll right. go. I, so, I agree with you. I, I think to, to me, I'm, I, I don't like, I don't, I deliver food. I don't like having food delivered. I now pizza, that's different. Okay. It's coming, you know, it comes right over, et cetera. But if I have to order something, you know, Grubhub or Uber eats or whatever, it's like how I'm, th- I'm in my car. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about being, it being, how long is it sat in the car? How long is it, you know, how many other deliveries did he have or whatever? Did he get his, you know, icky fingers on it or something like that or whatever. So yeah, I just, I'm I'm even happy to just go pick it up and come home with it. And that way I know it's fresh and it's hot and I'm good to go with that. I have my little Chinese takeout place right around the corner from me here. I can literally jump on my bike and be there and back in 15 minutes on my bike. So yeah, I, you, I'm just, it's just, it's a mental block for me. The whole food delivery thing. It's a mental yeah, block. It's a kind of a mental block for me too. Yeah. I just, not my style. So now anyway. I did. And, and I hate to say this, but you know, during the pandemic, right. You know, when that first happened and you, you know, everyone's like, Oh man, I could, I could use a steak from Outback. Mm-hmm. I I had Outback delivered once. And I, I, by the time it really got there, it wasn't cold, but it was warm. That's the point. That's my whole point. I am a fanatic about that. If I drive over to my, if I ride my bike to my Chinese place and pick it up, I am racing home to get it open and get it on a plate so that it's like, oh, it's still really hot, still really yeah. good. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And the same thing, we, we ordered a couple other things, you know. And Right. Now, the, but the one thing you can order, like, you know, pizza, because a lot of pizza delivery guys and, and you, I remember when I had my pizza shop, we did deliveries. Mm-hmm. We had the little bags, the thermo bags. Oh, yeah. That we would always put it in. So that kind of, but a lot of times they pick it up in a bag and they deliver it to you in a bag with no, you know. So, yeah, I'm with you. Uh, if I'm going to eat, if I'm going to eat something from a restaurant, I'm going to the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Something oh, I thought, exciting I heard happening a truck in the background. I thought Amazon had heard me and they were delivering stuff, but it's not an Amazon truck. <laughs> Funny. Okay. But yes, I, I'm going to, at very least, I'm going to pick it up, but I really, if it's real, like you said, if it's Outback or if it's a you know real restaurant, I'm just going to eat it there. I just like that better. And people are like, well, you got to leave a tip. Well, you got to leave a tip for a driver. And yeah. You got to pay a delivery fee. So it's, you know, it's even money either way. And, you know, you get to have fun and whatever. So, yeah. So, and, and I don't know if you're like me or not, but you know, when the wife and I, First moved to Winter Haven. And of course, right. then the pandemic hit like six months after we were there. But we were having fun exploring. Yes. And let's find a new restaurant. You know, yes. let's, find, let's find something that wasn't in Southwest Florida that we never went to before. Yes. And, and we're kind of doing that here, you know, now that we've moved to Central Florida by the Claremont area. We're kind of doing the same thing. You know, what? What's a few things we you know let's try some places we've never tried and that's yes that's always kind of fun of course sometimes you can walk out going i spent money for that crap <laughs> well that's i mean you could have done that with delivery too you could have something delivered and go oh that was i'm not doing that again right yeah so i hear it yeah that's so, just like 
I'm not going to Boston Lobster anymore. That lobster that was dead attacked me. <laughs> well, that's not. Let's face it here, BJ. You 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 brought that upon yourself. You probably that's, did not do it properly or something at Boston Lobster. Fancy. That's another thing. Blood thinners uh, kind of created a bad night for me that night too. Because once I start bleeding, woo, let it flow, let it flow, oh, let man. it flow. Oh uh, man, what are we gonna do with you? What are I'm we even at the age you? now with blood thinners. All of a sudden, my wife will look at me and she goes, "Your leg is bleeding." I go, "What? What? Oh damn, it is." I have no idea what I even did to it. Don't Dog get old, young people. You. If you are a young person listening to this podcast, do not get old. <laughs> That's at the and and the funny thing. And I have told people, and I was just having this discussion this week with a with a friend that we were talking about the getting old thing. And and I said, I don't care. I said, I am doing whatever it takes. I am living to be 100 years old. And they said, really, 100? Some people do that. I said, yeah, but I'm having sex when I'm 100 years old. <laughs> How many people have done that? And they said, well, that's a good goal. Hmm. <laughs> like, sure, Bill. Yeah, crazy old to, guy. I may, you. Have to look at, I may have to rethink my life now. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have goals, BJ. It's good to have something to aim for, even I in... Even old people new, like us. I think I have a new goal. Sex when you're 100. Yeah. Even yeah. sex when I'm 99. I, I said that. So I said I, I I said I did the math quick. You know, I'm 66. I said I have 33 years to, to get it to, you know, to keep things working. And they and my friend corrected me and said, no, your birthday's in January. You have 30 three, you know, 34 years. And I said, you're going to make me stick to the hundred thing. Right. And they said, absolutely. It's got to be a hundred. And I'm like, okay, well, there you go. Call me in January of whenever that is. So yeah, I want to be in that old folks home. Hey, Martha, come over here. I'm going to be a hundred today. And well, you know, I need a little action here. You know what I'm talking about, Martha. <laughs> this has been my goal for a hundred years. Years, hundred years, a hundred, and then if if you you know as as Fred Sanford used to say, if it really is the big one when you're a hundred and you have the you know the heart just goes out on you at a hundred, who cares? <laughs> I mean, what a goal you made it! You get the gold <laughs> star. You know, it's like you arrive in heaven and they are applauding for yeah, you. Yeah, but just think, my luck. I live to a hundred. I start. But I die before I finish. <laughs> I still think that, you know, I still think that counts. I still think we're putting that on your gravestone. <laughs> he was having sex when he died at 100. <laughs> Boy, well, this this, is, this show I'm is 60. this is not a kid friendly show, is it? I'm I'll 68. I just like to have sex at 68. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Don't do that to me. I almost splurted coffee all over my computer. Oh, as a comedian, that is. <laughs> That is the best thing that you can do. You can be telling your jokes up on stage and the first in the front row is drinking either a adult beverage or a soda. And all of a sudden you tell a joke and it just goes spraying everywhere you go. Yes. Yes. Success. <laughs> Victory is mine. I made them, I made them snort their coffee. Oh man. When you can do that. You, yeah. You, you are a comedian. At that you point. are a comedian. You are. <laughs> you, I, yes. I used to, the, the, the teacher version of that, I would be teaching, you know, when I was back in Sarasota, I taught adult education classes for phones, for iPhones. You know, I would teach old folks like us how to use their iPhone. And inevitably, not every class, but, you know, every couple of weeks, somebody in the back of the room goes, Oh my God, I have been looking to see how to do that for the last six months. It's driving me nuts. Thank you. And I would go, yes, I am a teacher. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I get it. That's the teaching equivalent of, of coffee through the nose. Yes. Well, when I was uh, a younger person, I a did a lot person. of, uh, you know, DJ dances, yes. Yes. you know, hops as you would call them or whatever. Yes. And my slogan always was. Rock them till they drop. Rock them till they drop. I taught my son that. Rock my sock son robots. continues the legacy. The awesome. only problem was he was doing a wedding. <laughs> and he rocked them. Till they dropped. 
till one of them dropped. Oh, dear. And I mean, dropped. Oh. <laughs> Let's what? say, I mean, I hate to be laughing about this because it was a sad, sad day, but I guess the wedding reception just didn't really go on after that. <laughs> Somebody, um... Somebody rocked until they dropped. And and out for the cat. I mean, just done. I mean, like um, I don't know for sure. I know an ambulance came in and wow. I, I don't know the exact story, but yeah, okay. it didn't. It didn't okay. Well. Okay. One of so, the wedding party, not in the bride or groom. I hope not. No, no, no. It was like okay. grandpa or somebody. Right, 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 right. But at least he probably dropped when he was dancing with some 23 year old, you know, bridesmaid okay. that was really hot. Perfect. Again. <laughs> Again, th these are the things that r rummage around in my brain to think when I get to the end of the line, will I be satisfied with how I have lived my life right up to the end? Because I ain't spending the last 20 years in some nursing home watching Days of Our Lives on TV just to pass the time. I am not doing that. I don't care. Well, I mean, I do care. Well, so I am not doing that. Huh? My wife sometimes will tell me. Yes. I, 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 I don't want to do this because I'm afraid. With your blood pressure and everything else, I'll kill you. And I go, please do. <laughs> Again. Oh, you mean the, <clears throat> the sex thing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm, is there, would there be a, is there a better way to go? I mean. I, I don't think there's a better way to go, but I think. Yes. Let's just put the shoe on the other foot. Okay. And all of a sudden, you're like, you know, significant other. This. Yes. You're going, this would be a great way to go. I'm having fun. Right. But the other person does. Yeah. They are kind of stuck with that knowledge. And you're that going, I killed him. Uh, uh, <laughs> I killed him. I killed him. him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you then, I, I killed mean, Bill. <laughs> I killed Bill. You have to be, you have to be comfortable in the <laughs> knowledge that you, that you assisted him to leave this world doing something that he really, really, really enjoyed, <laughs> that he had a great time right up to the final seconds of, of, <laughs> of life on this earth. So, I mean, you got to be okay with that. You know, so, I get it. We are living it. on the edge. Damn it. Live. <laughs> My favorite, I, I, I think I delivered the line in a couple of drag racing commercials in my early days. We'll sell you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. <laughs> edge of the seat. Yeah, I hear you. So, yes, boy, this this show is, what was this? This was show number 40, we said? Yep. This show turned adult in its 40th <laughs> episode. It absolutely did. So that's good. I'm going to have to write up the show notes and say, Moms, this might not be the one to share with the kids in the car. In the ah, heck, the kids know more than we do. Yeah, you're probably. Well, there, there we go with it. There's the callback to the Instagram and the YouTube shorts and the everything, everything is there's nothing. Nothing is uh, uh, private anymore. Nothing is private. Nothing is like we don't talk about that. No, we talk about everything. I get it. Kind of crazy. Well, I always said, because we're going back to. The final moments mm -hmm. in my younger years, I always played in bands, even before I met you, mm -hmm. <clears throat> like in my, my, you know, my teens, right. My twenties, right. Um, even a little bit in my, you know, younger thirties, I played drums and bands. Right. And I always said that this is how I want to go playing the drums, you know, on a, in a gig. Really? Gigging and just right there, boom. Really? Yeah. And but I always said, too, yeah. that I would do it until I died. And you didn't. I didn't really do it. No, no you didn't. Now, Although comedy, I, did... I said the same thing, though. I want to do it until I die. And Do what? I'm sorry, I missed the first Comedy. One. Comedy, right? But I've, I've kind of, you know, there's, there's parts of me in the back of my mind wants to get back on stage. Right. But then because of my blood pressure issues and other issues that I have, I just, you know, I mean, yeah, it would be fun to die on stage. And I, I don't mean when you when you don't get laughs for your jokes. I mean, you know, right. die on stage, you know, having the <laughs> crowd just, I mean, spitting up their, their, their drinks. And, you know, everything is just like, you, everything is great. You're just, you're just killing it. And then, 
<clears throat> you're yeah. killing it. And then it would get- be great. But then I guess they would remember you because, man, that comedian was really funny. But then he died like halfway through his show. Died we got in- our money back. <laughs> <laughs> great show. Free. <laughs> Saw something you're not going to see. And then, and of he course, died. here, we'll right. give you your money back. Right. And of course, see, now here's. I don't think I could, I don't think this would work for me because you know, if you did it today, if you died on stage today, your limp, lifeless body would be on social media for years to come, (laughs) right? BJ Odom killed it on stage until it killed him on stage. Here he is dead and that's it. So So you're, that's how you're going to be remembered. Now, there has been nights on stage that I have died, believe me. <laughs> I uh, totally understand that. I uh, totally get that. There are just nights where it's like, I wish I was dead. You know, yeah, And then there's thing. nights, though, that. it's just like, oh, my God, the right. comedy gods are with me. <laughs> comedy gods. Do you have, are there comedy gods? I didn't know. Oh, that. yeah, they are, because some oh, nights yeah. they are with you. And For I don't sure. care what you do, what you say, how you say it. They're with you and they are laughing from the time you start till the time you end. And you usually get off stage going, oh, my goodness. The comedy gods were with me tonight. I want that audience every night. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we say I play pickleball a couple of times a week. And I always say that, and I kind of tell people that as well. The pickleball gods are smiling upon you today because, you know, you'll hit the shot and it'll hit the top of the net and just fall over onto the other side. So you score the point or something like that. The pickleball gods are smiling upon you today. Congratulations. So I'll tell you, this, this neighborhood is pickleball. Just Oh, yeah. Mania. Oh, come on. Pickleball is the, thing, is the thing everywhere. And come on, Gainesville, Alachua County. I mean, I, we have a pickleball Facebook group, and we're constantly posting photos of other communities doing big, big things with pickleball, and we're not doing it. And I think, I don't know, I think there's a conspiracy to keep pickleball down here in Gainesville. I don't know. We gotta, we're, we're trying to rally the troops got off on a little tangent there but yes pickleball is huge and growing and fabulous and it's the most fun you can have with your clothes on it just is sorry i had a, i i had something that popped into my mind but this show has been adult enough so <laughs> hey wait a minute i'm gonna i'm gonna answer this on speakerphone on speakerphone i'm gonna answer this call on speakerphone uh doing the bj and bill the podcast hello there how are you Do you recognize that voice, Bill? No. Say something else, caller. Yeah, what are you guys doing? Recording the show? Yeah, we are, and you're on it. Oh, well, welcome. To the Can program. you? Here I am. <laughs> turn, up, turn him up. Turn him up. That's our boss, Gentry. Turn him up. Oh, he's not. He's not coming over very he well. He did. He did, but it was hard to hear. Oh, it's the boss. Okay, I'll call. I'll call you later. We'll get you a, a, as a guest on the show, son. He hung up on you. He hung up on you. He did. <laughs> he, I'm, you had the phone facing the camera, and I could see his name, and it went beep, gone. <laughs> he hung up on you. All right, that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. I'm just saying. You better yes. call him back as soon as we're done and make nice to the boss. <laughs> just saying. I'm going to say, Bill told me to. Oh, I will smack you around. You will, you know, don't do that. Don't do that. So anyway, awesome. Well, boy, that's, I, and look at that. We're right to the top of the hour. So perfect timing. So great. <laughs> All right. So this has been, um, yeah, an interesting show this week, folks. It's uh, been a little bit, a little bit edgier than most. I guess when you turn 40, things happen. So yeah, 40th episode of BJ and Bill, the podcast. Awesome. Let me see. I'm trying to figure. Okay. Well, let's end the podcast and I'll try to figure this out. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out something on my computer now all of a sudden. Oh my God. He's got tech problems. I'm I'm about to put, I'm about to change hats folks. Yep. So, go, go, right. go get your, go get your other hat and we'll work on that. And then I'll have to call back the sun. And uh, Hey, we didn't even talk about uh, sports. We didn't, we didn't even talk about sports as we record this, our Miami heat beat Denver in Denver to even the series at one game apiece as we record this. And as we record this and the Florida uh, Panthers are getting their furry Panther butts kicked by the Las Vegas golden Knights badly. Yeah. They've lost two games in their series. They haven't lost two games. 
they have had the they have had their butts handed to them by the Golden Knights. I mean, let's see if they can do anything at home. But I'm thinking, wow, wow. So yeah, but I will say this in a a more positive note. Yes, uh, I think Game Three is tonight. uh, But the Blades, and we're recording this on a Tuesday. Right, uh, the Blades are up in their series two games to oh, two games to nothing. And they're right. and they've both been on the road. Well, so they're coming awesome. home. There you go. Awesome. So yeah, I don't the think they uh, played last night. What's that? I don't think they played last night, but they were up two games to nothing. And I think they played right. tonight again. Right, right, right. So a- again, as we record this on the uh, on the Tuesday here, yeah. So we are the the next game. Uh, yeah, no, both of the games are, are not until uh, Wednesday night. So, yeah, or, yeah, the basketball game is because the, they're going to Miami. So, there's, uh, they're in Miami. So, anyway, who knows? All right, that's going to do it. Keep up your sports. Keep up with your everything. And, you know, <laughs> we'll have a good week. So, all right, everybody. We appreciate you joining us. As always, feel free to come over to the Facebook page and Bill podcast. Drop a comment there. Uh, like we said, Wherever you guess on your favorite podcast outlet, be that Apple Podcast or Spotify or anywhere, please feel free to leave us a review. We love you for that, and we appreciate it. And until then, have a great week. And now it's time for BJ to say, see ya!